Welcome to the Comics Experiment, the show right here at Comic Story, and where every Saturday we sit down and discuss some of your favorite stuff involved in the world of comic books. We go over lists, we talk about hot button topics, we talk about what's happening in the movies. It generally happens with me and a prolorethra of guests. That's a word, I made it up, totally links to the other one. If you're watching this for the first time, we do stream it live every Thursday at twitch.tv slash eligiblemonster at about 2 p.m. Eastern. And you can come join the fun and support the show directly by joining us over there. Or you can go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash comicstorian, where you'll get to see some of the bloopers, behind the scenes footage, and you get to see this early. So, Dan, yes. something's happening in the next two weeks. What is happening? Well, in the first next off, two we weeks? have no advertiser. So I can so all those people that jumped to like 15 minutes in to skip them. They're just, they're just, they're just gonna be past and not know what's going on anymore. But in the next two weeks, <laughs> oh man, the next two weeks. Well, yeah. first off, you notice our other seat is empty, right? Yes, it's very empty, and we're sitting slightly weird. Why is that seat empty? Bro? That seat is empty because Andy decided to go with his wife to her job. <sighs> what a horrible husband! I know. Seriously, why would he ditch the people that he loves the most? <laughs> exactly. You and me. <laughs> yeah. Totally. It's totally All right. us. All right, guys. Especially you. So within two weeks, there's something coming out. What's coming out? I Come believe on. it's Dark Phoenix. Okay, I'll, I was gonna. If you couldn't tell me what it was, yes. I definitely don't know just because you told me before the show. And being that it's Dark <laughs> Phoenix, what do you think would be a fun discussion to have today? Because we have Dark Phoenix, we have Hickman changing things up. We both love the current run of the X Men. You you kind of just spoiled the. Or, are we are we on a different topic today than I thought we were? It's an X-Men related topic. Yes, the point I'm making is we're talking about all the different X-Men stuff. Oh, we're talking about all of them. So who would you think we should grab for an X-Men related topic? Uh, who do I know that knows a ton about the X-Men? Uh, Sal! Yes! Come on, Sal! <laughs> <laughs> right, my bad. Rob! Hey! <laughs> I look good on camera. You do, the plus, especially with the new angles and everything we have going, yeah, don't I you? You look really good, good buddy. Really good. I look so, really good. okay, it's hold weird. on. Just throwing this out there real <laughs> it's quick. It's my good side, too. Is it? Yeah. There you also, go. we're swapping there the seat. It worked for better for you. Yeah, it worked better for me. Okay. It's actually my good side. Yeah. You I don't like have a this. good side. It's Your you good side's a, your ass you cheeks. Better. <laughs> Thank you. My better side is relatively speaking. So anything can be better. So, okay, okay. Real quick, Rob. What? <laughs> why have you not been on the show? And why are you now just a guest on the show? It, okay. So, Raw. <laughs> I am sexy. I know everybody that, missed me. Look, guys. Okay. Uh, I've got. Okay. Don't forget, that's the mic for the podcast. This is the mic for the podcast. Okay, yes. Okay, everyone. <laughs> no, it's, it's, everything's good, guys. It's just like I've got my whole vlogging channel I'm trying to work on, and I've, I've got all my personal projects. So I was like, hey, look, I can't be on here all the time. So he's like, but he was like, okay, well then, you know, right. be on here like whenever and, you can. So I was well, like, all right, And, and I will admit, yeah. you have hit me up in between these things, yeah. but the, time, the stars have to align because of the advertiser issue yeah. for yes. it to actually be able to work. Yeah, apparently so, the advertisers don't like it if... Everybody, stop asking where I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can have more yeah. Rob. Yeah. That's literally what it comes down yeah. to. Good. I know it sounds counterintuitive. If we stop asking for Rob, we'll get more Rob. You know what? That's exactly yeah. it. Stop asking for Rob, <laughs> and you'll get more Rob. It's called reverse psychology, guys. Yes. yes. But Rob hit me up today, and he's like, do you want to get lunch? Because Rob, in, in, in the two years we've been doing this show on Thursdays, <laughs> has not realized we do it on Thursdays. I keep forgetting. <laughs> I, I, did, I wasn't even sure when we were doing it. Like when I was when I was here all the time. Like, are so, we recording tomorrow? And no, I was like, hey, we're, we're, uh, we wanted to talk X Men, but like we don't have a, an X Men expert. Yeah. Dan and I can only go so deep into it. We don't have an expert. <sighs> Dude, okay, you know what? I'm not even. High five. <laughs> yes. High five. That was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad one of you appreciated it. I'm just impressed. It. That was awesome. He, 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 dad jokes it like crazy right off the top of his head. You know yeah. that. It's what he does. Dad jokes, that's, I, that I is wait. true. I so, wait to insert them at the... So the just moment. so you know, Rob, yes. you're actually on the first episode on the new set. Yes, you are. Oh, am I? Yeah. yeah. That's This This is actually pretty legit. I walked down here and I was just like, wow. So this is cool. So for anybody who's asking, what ended up happening is my entire basement became nothing but sets. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it did. It, Multiple. It, it, it was, we had one in the corner. We had one right here. We had one over there. We had one over there. And I realized, like, I've lost most of my basement. Why do we need a set for everything? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we condensed down to this and a bar in the office. Did you guys finish the room back there? No, no, no. Just no. Oh. more shelves. Oh, okay. It looked like yeah. it was finished. I was like, what? So we condensed everything down so that I have I have my basement back. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> we can do this. It's like a mini. It's like a mini LA set. 
Yeah. Like a bunch of little sets in like one of those little LA studios. That's yeah. what it was. And yeah. now and now I have like a table that apparently Gary just uses as a jump location. Gary. I mean, it's not like you use it for anything else. <laughs> Gary's the one that also broke the Wonder Woman tail. Hold on, you broke the Wonder Woman tail? Yeah, he broke the horse's tail. Yeah. What did you do that you he, broke the tail? He was upstairs and knocked a picture off the wall. Yeah, he psychically <laughs> knocked a picture off the wall. Wow. Yeah, it was impressive, actually. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, with a tail, no less. Yeah. I guess. I so, know. okay. I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> Traditional Rob. <laughs> yeah. I have a tendency to go off on tangents. I have, that, n- I wait, have not what? lost that. I have not lost that power. <laughs> oh, man. It's still my power. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Here. Okay, so yep. you're usually so on topic. I saw you I made like a video about the Hickman situation. Oh, dude, I was yeah. so ex- okay. I didn't even okay. I here's a, man. Okay, look, here's the thing. Here's <laughs> Rob the hasn't thing. changed at all, guys. I wasn't, I wasn't even fully aware. I knew Hickman was doing the two mini series, and I was like, okay, well that's cool. We'll get like two little mini series from Hickman, whatever. Right. And it'll be like it'll end. It'll be like, man, I really wish we would write the X Men. Mm. Mm-mm. People were posting in my comments and sending me stuff on Twitter. How do you feel about Hickman taking over the X Men? I'm just like, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no way this is happening. And then it turned out Hickman was taking over the X Men. So it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you're on the side of this, which is good. Yeah. Because I don't know if I want Hickman taking over the X Men. Oh, I love. I, I understand where you're coming from because there can be huge lulls where nothing happens. Well, no, no. I like <laughs> Hickman. I like yeah. Hickman. Yeah. But I feel like the X-Men had a great restart recently with Matthew Rosen, or Rosenbaum, Ro- Rosenberg, Rosenberg. Rosenberg. Rosenberg, his run with things, what they've been doing, other than Age of X-Men, because who, who the hell yeah, knows? Nobody, nobody's, nobody likes Age of X-Men. No. X-Men doesn't even like Age of Marvel doesn't even like Age <laughs> yeah. of X-Men. No one's reading that story. Right. right now. It's so, oh, it's but awful. like the return of Wolverine, I thought went over really well. Yeah. Uh, Scotty Young finally found but his see, footing on Deadpool. That's the problem though. Yeah. It's, like, it's like the X-Men returning is kind of scattered everywhere. Yeah. yeah. There's no cohesiveness to it. No, yeah. I agree with you on so, that. Yeah. Yeah. But it, I, I feel like everything is finally starting to find its groove, even uncanny, because the X Man story kind of lasted a little longer than it probably should have. Yeah, ten issues where we're mm-hmm. still way going. too long. Well, <laughs> still yeah. technically going. He's not wrong. Yeah. Um, who's even writing it? It's too many people. Oh, the, uh, so it's too many people oh, that right. are so forgetting. That's right. It's no main story. Yeah, they're it's all a bunch forgetting of that there's multiple books. They're all telling pretty much the exact same thing, just in different well, okay. places. Okay, that's in the how world. the original Age of Apocalypse was. <laughs> yeah, there was no like part one or whatever. It was right. just a bunch of little stories, and that's why it was bad. I think that's why so, what they're trying to replicate because X Men's no. from the Age of. Why Apocalypse. would you try to replicate that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why? Exactly. Well, so they had like five writers on Uncanny X Men, and oddly enough, it really seemed to work. Yeah, right. And then what they did was Matthew Rosenberg stayed on and. The others did the Age of X Men. Yeah, okay. that's what's been going on. See, um, okay. Here's the thing. I like Rosenberg's X Men, right? But the problem that I have is there's just too much happening in the span of six issues. They went from like Wolverine and Cyclops reforming the X Men team to like Joseph, mm-hmm. the crappy Magneto imposter who yeah. had like one great I, story, and then no one knew what to do with him after he that. He showed I, up, and we were both just like, "Who the hell is this guy?" We're on the the review show, and I'm like. So it's not Magneto? But it looks just like Magneto. Oh, I don't no. know who the hell that here's is. A, hey, not even on top of that. They also come in and they're like, hey, here's a different version of Psylocke too. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. All right. And I was I got to the end of my video and I was like, oh God. I was like, and then it ends. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Like I was I was ready to be finished. Here's the thing. Joseph sucks. Joseph was a he was okay. Do you guys remember like in high school when there was always that one couple? And then, like, they would break up, and the girl would just, she would just be mean, man. Just be, like, spiteful, you know? <laughs> okay, that was Astra. Okay, so Astra, like, it was, this was retconned much later on. It was, it was Scott Liddell or somebody. Anyway, like, in the mid-1990s, Marvel had this genius idea of, let's create two Magnetos. But, like, how do we make it work? Well, you don't. But what they did, <laughs> what they did is they said that at some point along the line, we didn't know that Magneto had this chick named Astra, who was part of her brotherhood, his brotherhood of evil mutants. Right. And he treated her terribly. Right. So to get back at him, when, like, Avalon fell, like, the asteroid came crashing down to Earth and it fell, like, Colossus rescued Magneto, and then, like, like there's this, this quick little interim period where Astra kidnapped Magneto and took him to a space between dimensions, copied his mind, and then put him back into the world, and then we got Joseph. And then, like, and, and just, to give you, just to give you an idea, here's what happened to Joseph. Like, here's, here's, here's part of how Joseph progressed. Joseph was, like, a clone of Magneto, like, basically operating as Magneto. And then eventually he was defeated by Magneto. He went to, like, Guatemala or something, became a Christian missionary. <laughs> and, then, and then, yeah, and then went back and then, like, reformed for his, like, reformed his ways. It was mid-1990s comics, folks. See, this... Right, it, was, it was weird. This just sounds like they tried to do the cable and strife thing. 
but with Magneto. Yeah, yeah, this this was Cable and Strife after Cable and Strife, but like bad. Right. Like I not just, as good. And you wondered why I was never a huge X Men fan, which <laughs> no, is why oh, you're the X Men no, expert. No, 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 no. That's that's not even the worst of it. Okay, so so Quanin. Right. All right. The fake Psylocke. <laughs> so the way the way this played out, <laughs> she doesn't Psylocke. speak. She doesn't talk either. Does she? she's a mute? No, she, uh, no, she no, speaks Quanin can talk. Uh, Mandarin. Yeah, oh, no, no, okay, she's uh, right. she's maybe. She's, maybe Anyway, she speaks a different language. She speaks a non-English language. Yes. Okay, so I, I want to say she was Japanese, but the the way it works is originally there was this Betsy Braddock is a sister of Brian Braddock, so of course she's British, and right. so she always was British, and yeah. then she stopped being popular because who cares about a chick that makes a butterfly on her face when she uses her powers? <laughs> and so, so because of this, uh, what Marvel did is they 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 swapped her, like they right. they they literally had her like like race bended her. So. You ended up having, there was some guy who was like with some chick named Quan or something like that. Anyway, she was believed to have been dead or whatever. And then, and then like Marvel has something called the Fall of Mutants. So the Fall of Mutants is this story where like we're going to kill off basically everybody except for the ones we really like. And they're going to go through like the Siege Perilous and their lives are going to start over or whatever. Anyway, Psylocke basically wakes up with no memory of who she is in like mm -hmm. Japan or China or something like that. So this guy who basically lost his chick at one point, I'm pretty sure, ends up taking her and then swaps her mind. With with the the Quanin chick who's like in a comatose state or something like that. So basically, like Quanin goes into si into like British. And that was the Japanese Psylocke, right? That everyone knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reason why she was it was basically Betsy Braddock in the body of Quanin or something. It's man, it's been it's been like twenty five years. It's it's I don't it's ridiculous. But that's why she was Japanese for so long. So the question now has to be asked: Why did things change? That's why I say Brett, Matt Rosenberg did like he did way too much. Too this should right. have been like well, two or three story arcs. I don't think there was a plan for Hickman to come in and change everything up. Well, I think there was. Otherwise, right. why cram so much into six issues? Yeah. It's like, it's like the whole of Civil War three and three issues. Or I Civil see, War two and three issues. See, well, and suppose. that's why I'm wondering if this was intended. Like if, right. Because it seems like he was setting up a lot, and then it was suddenly turned into, well, you got to cram it down into five. Yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of it felt like set up with Wolverine and Cyclops and everything like that. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So when he originally started, there was no plan for Hickman. But then they said, Hickman's coming, wrap it up. And right, right. So, and that's, that's my yeah. problem with Hickman, though. I felt like everything's starting to find its groove right now. Scotty Young's Deadpool just got its first major villain. That just got its right. first major arc. But there's no there's no guarantee that Hickman's going to mess with Deadpool, or at least anything's going to happen. With... Any, apparently, yeah. anything, anything that, related anything to the X-Men? Anything X-Men. So Scotty oh, Young... I can tell you exactly why that's happening. What? Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's exactly why that's happening. I think they're, it's they're, a, I think it's a combo of that, and I think the biggest problem that happened recently was too many people kind of restarted their own X Men. Yeah, I would agree. That with that. There's too many different, like almost different X Men universes within the main universe. I would agree and with I that. Think, well, Wolverine alone well, has like five or six books. He's exactly. already yeah, he's already back in a time. Yeah, and, his, and it kept old man Logan around. Oh no, no, he's he's dying. It's like it's like well, the, he's the, been the, dying the death of old man Logan. He's back in the wasteland. He's been dying and... since old man Logan thirty. You know what old yeah. man okay, you know what old man Logan reminds me of? It reminds me of Goldberg versus Stone Cold Steve Austin. The match <laughs> that never happened that we all should have seen. Dude, here's the thing, man. WCW was it was tanking, it was it was it was out, it was going away, and you had Bill Goldberg who was super popular. He had like the streak, he only lost to like one guy, and that was <laughs> that was like Kevin Nash. And they're like, okay, so we're gonna take this super popular guy who everybody wants to see, wrestle Bill Goldberg, and we're gonna bring him over into the WCW. WWF, and you know what we're not going to do? We're going to we're not going to have him wrestle Stone Cold Steve. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to not do that. We're like it makes the most sense, and like everybody wants to see it. So let's just not do that. Let's just do something stupid, like like The Rock versus Goldberg or something like that. No one, no one, The Rock. Goldberg versus nobody Lesner. wanted to see The Rock versus Goldberg. Nobody it, wanted to see. It was, Rock. Gold, it was Goldberg versus Lesnar. Whatever. Nobody wanted to see that match. <laughs> nobody was asking for that match. Nobody sat down and said, "You know what will make the match of the century? Goldberg and Brock Lesnar." <laughs> No one Never thought that. To Lesnar, he's still there, because he's, he's not John there. Cena. Yeah, no, he's not. John Cena's back to being uh, what's his like name? That. No, no, he you did. said his name. John like... Cena. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's back to being like like Thug Notes or Thug so, Thugnificent or whatever it is. I don't remember. But what was going on is so Deadpool got to twelve, set everything up, yeah, mm -hmm. and then I tweeted out like, "Oh, Deadpool's finally on track. It feels like it's finally going in the right direction." <laughs> <laughs> and Scotty Young and everyone's like, well, it's done on 15. That kind of sucks. Yeah. So Scotty Young could write one heck of a Deadpool. Yeah. He, he was, was doing, doing a great really job with it. He like, finally hit his stride and yeah. he was going like too he was LOL going mean. And then he was going too sad and then he was going too LOL. And he, he's right in the middle now. Yeah. And it's he like, is. oh, good. We, I like what you've done with Deadpool now. Well, we're canceling it at 15. Right. Why? Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. That, that's the only thing that makes sense to me because with Deadpool, it makes no sense. Deadpool will sell and always yeah. does because oh, it's, always. it's Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool always sells. The other X-Men books I can understand. I mean, I can see if they canceled like Age of X-Men because they're like, nobody's reading it. And it's, it's like, well, I mean, I could have told you not to start it. Obviously, it's horrible. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's terrible. But like, It's like five miniseries within like a 
overall miniseries that is yeah. But no, I would definitely say it's because of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I could see that. Do you think that. it's that or Hickman or maybe yeah. a combo of the two? It might, well, well, from what I understand, Hickman, the, the reason why he had that big lull in writing comics is because he was trying to do screenplays. And, that'll, and that's the for that's, that's the rumor mill, and I guess it didn't work out or whatever. But they have him going back and doing the X Men. Honestly, I think what Hickman's going to write in X Men is what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to use for their X Men. I and that would I explain could, yeah. shutting down all X Men books, yeah. even ones that he's not directly affected. So there's one continuity to reference, and yeah. people are just like, "Well, how, where do I start with the X Men? Because I loved him in the MCU. It's like start there. Yeah. X Men number one by Jonathan Hickman. Plus, that would make sense with Deadpool as well, considering I mean they're definitely going to do more Deadpool. Yeah, they're movies. Keeping yeah, they're and keeping him. They're keeping it all rated. With the way yeah. the Hickman thing reminded me of the Brian Michael Bendis thing, which he's finally getting his stride with Superman. Right, but he it came took long enough, man. Yeah, it took way too <laughs> dude. long. But. It was literally like six months of like screw Brian Michael oh, Bendis, <laughs> dude. Leviathan. I'm I still don't care about Leviathan Rising, but I do love the whole thing with Jonathan Kent. Yeah, yeah I that's dig awesome. that. Yeah, but I'm what I'm saying, that. like, so when he came in, like Tomasi's run had to end. Um, um, uh, Dan, Dan Abbott's run had to no, end. No, Dan Jurgens. Jurgens, right? Yeah. Everyone's run had to end, and then nothing lined up anymore. And you're like, what is even happening? And now Supergirl's off doing what? Yeah. <laughs> Bendis being Bendis. Yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't know. The only, the only difference here is that, like, and, you know, I never thought I would say it since, like, all new, all different Marvel or in my life. But, like, Marvel seems to have more cohesiveness now than DC does. In, yeah, terms, in no. terms of like, in terms of like, new people they're bringing in and the comics that they're writing. Well, it right. reminds me of how DC looked at DC Rebirth. Yeah. Because you know the reason Heroes the finale is delayed, it's oh, so it, it can tie. Yeah, in it ties in Doomsday Clock. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, are you freaking I, kidding I, me? I knew that as soon as they delayed it. They said it's coinciding with Doomsday Clock. I was like, that's gonna spoil Doomsday Clock. Yeah. So, yeah. Yep. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 So no way. So what do I gotta read first next week? <laughs> yeah. 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 I yeah I have I, honestly I kind of don't like I'm reading Batman, which is kind of cool, but. I kind of don't know what. Did you guys hear the Incredible Hulk's out selling Batman? Uh, well, yeah, the, the Immortal Hulk. Hulk's incredible. Yeah, the Immortal it Hulk is, is uh, nuts. You see what it did there? It wasn't as good. Why as say mine, mine or bad? Oh, no, come no, on. no, no, no. I like. Isn't it the bad. Immortal like Hulk right now? As well? it is, it's the yes, Immortal Hulk. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm looking at the monthly sales. Like, I would believe it outselling Superman, Justice League. No, no, they re they release it like it's like Immortal Hulk out is outselling. I don't know if it was only for a month, right? But, like it's outselling Batman as well. Well, Immortal I mean, Hulk is, is literally one of the best books out in Marvel right now. Oh, so it's, I could it's, see it's, it making insane. sense as well, considering kind of from what I heard. I mean, I haven't been reading Batman, but based off of uh, Comic Store and Weekly, um, they hit a huge lull. Yeah, that a lot of people were not enjoying. Oh, dude! Oh no, Batman was doing the stupid nightmare thing. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. took way too long. Okay, so Batman was still selling. Hold on, uh, let's go to like last month. Yeah, okay. You want to know like the two best books? I don't think anybody's reading. What's that? X Force and Captain America. X Force is pretty good. I have not been reading Captain. Oh, America. I love Captain. Wow, I'm not Tana the Hase biggest. Captain America. I'm nuts. not the biggest fan of the uh, the art in X Force. I'm, I'm enjoying it is the finicky. story. It is finicky. It's the cosmic Ghost Rider artist, which yeah. I think. I mean, it's good art. I don't think it fits the tone it's of that. It's too exotic for that. Exactly. Yeah. I feel like the uh, all new X Men artist would have been better on that. Because uh, yeah, sure I think that was read... uh, that was Jim Chung. I think. Yeah, Dude. I'm not sure. The first issue they had a backup story with what Boom Boom was doing. I didn't care. And it, but the art on that, I feel, would have fit. The that that would have fit better. But I have not cared about Boom Boom since 1997. Nobody else. Okay. Has I think either. they're trying so, to make her. I don't know. Important, but boom, 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 yeah. a boom, boom. She throws yeah. little plasma balls that makes stuff blow up. I'm okay, pretty sure. I don't. You're not wrong. In the last five months, here's how starkly the differences have changed. Because DC, for the most part, unless it's an event or like a Spider-Man, typically takes the top ten for the most part. Like, oh yeah. So in December, it was Batman Who Laughs, Batman Damned, Doomsday Clock, Batman, Batman, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man. Batman Annual and Shazam and Justice League. That's 11. Well, obviously, wow. Batman Dam's going to be up there. Most people bought it for the bat penis. Yeah, and now they have to wait like, <laughs> the bat like six okay, years but until it finishes. Of April, so four months later, okay. this is Batman having the crappy stall in Nightmares. Right. I'm kind of amazed Batman took so many of the number of like the top spots in DC. Like nothing else really had it. No, oh, yeah. it always has, though. Yeah. yeah so here's here's April. Okay? okay. War of the Realms. Symbiote Makes Spider sense. Man, which I'm Makes shocked sense. about. Yeah, I'm, I don't really like Symbiote Spider Man. No, I don't either. But it's Batman right. Who Laughs, Immortal Hulk, Batman, Batman, Thanos, Heroes in Crisis, Web of Venom, 
and Amazing Spider-Man. Well, okay, to be well, fair, here's, April was Endgame month. April was Endgame. Thanos was a one shot. So yeah. that doesn't really count. War of Realms was issue number one. Those okay, always sell. Oh, March. Let's yeah. see, let's see March. War of the Realms. So I'm not, good I'm not right saying you're wrong. Marvel, Marvel saying, always dude, takes dude, the number Marvel, one. With an oh, it's dude, fantastic. War of Realms. Dude, let me. Okay, here's the thing. Here, man. Here's man. Man, here is the thing, man. <laughs> when I first started War of Realms, I was like, okay, I feel like this is gonna be. It's gonna be like Guardians of the Galaxy, which turned into like Infinity Wars. Right. Where it's like, okay, here's a story that it was terrible. Like here's a story that that Jason Aaron wants to tell, and the Marvel editorial is gonna be like. Wrap it into everything, you know. Right. Involve everybody or something. Like no, dude, that story is seamless and yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Berserker Thor, dude. Oh my god, dude, it was. Plus, it works I, so I well it. in doing like tie-ins because War of the Realms, you can easily have everyone fighting just a different realm yeah. in a different location, and you don't have to go. Oh, I have to read that story because yeah. when it comes down to it. You really don't. You just need to know these people are fighting these people that's, over here. That's, and that's a great thing. Like the main story recaps everything so well. Yeah. But like I'm reading Uncanny X Men and I think um I'm trying to history. read them all, but I'm way so, behind yeah, at this point. Good. I tried yeah, my I'm, hardest. It didn't work. I'm I'm picking <laughs> and choosing. So um, I will say War of the Realms, I was getting irritated that it took almost two years after hyping to oh, actually yeah. get to the war. Like when they were yeah. hyping it eight months out, War of the Realms in eight months. Are you freaking kidding me, And it'll, it'll it'll end in six months. <laughs> I, re I remember <laughs> when it... Uh, but it was worth the wait, is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, oh, it, yeah. You could tell that the reason it was taking so long is so that it would be a cohesive yeah. Yeah. high instead of just being the normal Marvel event of here's the main and over here is where the Cosmic Cube's going to get found. I, just, I was just thinking <laughs> that. He's going to like bomb it up the Cosmic Cube. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah. you are right. April was a special month, but because in uh, but in March it was still relatively even in comparison. Um, we had Detective Batman Who Laughs, Doomsday, Batman, Batman, Heroes in Crisis, Spider Man, Spider Man, Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, Spider Man's when got a bunch Justice of Justice League. When you're saying Batman, Batman, are you saying the two separate ones, or is there really well, Batman, and Batman, Batman? Yeah, I remember. Like it's really like, quite <laughs> weekly. So yeah, part of me keeps hearing that going. Why on earth is it? Batman, Batman, hold on. Did we just lose the stream? Sorry about that, guys. We had uh, the camera overheat. We were attempting something new, and it burned everything down. My sexiness or, overheated. Or the Twitch, as they said. Rob melted our cameras. I yeah. melted it with my awesomeness. You guys yeah. wonder why he wasn't around for a while. We Every week had to buy a new camera. Yeah, like, it just kept melting. It's, it's expensive, expensive to have Rob here. <laughs> yeah, it is. It really was pricey. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm we, not cheap. Rob, I'm, not, we, I'm not a cheap girl. Sales-wise, yes. Uh, they did take it in end game month. Um, Hulk was at number 11, though, so he's been creeping up there. Yeah, I believe month. it, man. Immortal Hulk is nuts. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's amazing. Like, this all emaciated Hulk is all like... It's really good, and it's very different tone from all the other Hulks that yeah. you aren't going in going, all right, what story arc are they going to re repeat well, this mm -hmm. time? That's Part the, the problem with, like, the Hulk, and we were talking about the Flash. As much as people love these superheroes, mm -hmm. Flash runs fast. You can only do so much of that. And the yeah. Hulk yeah. gets angry and breaks things. That You can only do so much of that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see them doing this horror take on the Hulk that stands out from everything. And yeah. You can't be like, well, that's just like what he did with Red Hulk. And that's just what he did with World War Hulk. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. I mean, I don't know... Honestly, I see. Here's the thing: like, occasionally I'll come across a run for a character or a team, and then you like, like they get to the point where like they're done, they sit down, they're like, okay, I'm finished. And it's like, well, I mean, how do you like come back from that? Yeah. Right. But like, see, World also, War Hulk, if they were to ever to end the Hulk, that should have been it. Yeah. Yeah. That see, that's, yeah. That's I felt the same way after Greg Pak's run, and then we just got like a whole bunch of terrible Hulk stories, mm -hmm. and then we got this. So I don't know. Kind of curious. We'll see you know what? Actually, I actually did a little research. Just one of the thousands of tangents in this episode. I was because someone hit me up and goes, "What came after World War Hulk?" And I'm like, "Well, World War Hulks." But what came after that? <laughs> you know? Yeah, World War it Hulk was Red Hulk. Smash. Red Hulk is the follow-up storyline. Yeah, because Bruce Banner's locked underground. Yeah, yeah. So they, yeah, and then yeah, they did a whole bunch of apparently Incredible Hulk turned into Incredible Hercules for a little while. Yeah, that was that was when they yeah because Bruce Banner was underground and so they they took him out of the equation and they made it uh, they turned Amadeus Cho yeah. and they put the incredible they put Hercules in there and then that's when like the Hulk events like switched over to Red Hulk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Jeff and Lowe then was Red Hulk that. came in and that was the second run. So yeah. the Hulk kept going really strong. So yeah, but like that's that's what I'm saying. Like Jeff Lowe wrote Red Hulk, which is like one of three good stories he's ever written. Right. But, Jeff Loeb, he's a good writer. What's he on right now? He's not. He's doing the whole TV arm of Marvel. Ah, uh, oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> so, Wait, the new Disney Plus stuff? No, the like oh. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And oh. Which took five seasons to find oh. its footing and literally got to the point where they're like, this is the last season. Yeah. Holy crap, people watched it. Let's yeah. keep going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not one of those people. I'm definitely not. So, okay, so Hickman's coming in, changing yes. things up in the X-Men. <clears throat> yes. Okay. Uh, you, you're excited about it. I'm hyped. So what yeah. did he say in the interview? You read the interview, right? Well, yeah. Well, was, apparently, like, he convinced Marvel to do it. Like, Marvel didn't want to. I have the interview Probably. up, by the way, on the laptop. 
the one that I closed up because yeah, the one you just, the one you closed out. Yeah. It um. Well, I mean, the big problem, like, and that's what stands by what I thought. I thought Marvel basically was like, we just restarted the X Men. Right. Yeah. Marvel, Marvel didn't want to, but Hickman was like, it needs to all be cohesive and organized and yeah. straightforward. So like, do this, and like, he convinced Marvel to do it, which I understand because Hickman is like, I mean, not even to sound like a Hickman fanboy, he's really never written anything bad. Like, there's nothing he's written that sucks. What are, what I mean, are some really of his biggest ones? I mean, you can test it, man. Okay, the biggest one, Fantastic Four. Okay. He wrote, he, wrote the whole, he wrote the whole Avengers and New Avengers, Collapse of the Multiverse, and yes. Secret Wars, okay. 2015. He's written uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., which actually took a while to finish. It took a few years to finish. Right. Um, that was probably the weakest of the ones that he wrote. Okay. He's done, um, he did uh, Secret Warriors. That's the one that introduced Daisy Johnson as Quake. Um, he wrote, uh, night, uh, we, uh, I think it's Nightly News, which is an indie story, indie okay. comic he wrote. He wrote East of West. That's his like own ongoing, I think it's still ongoing. Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure it's still going. Comic. Yeah, I, I fell off a while ago. But. Oh, East of West is so cool. I love it. Um, Secret Warriors. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to see anything that got canceled early. That, well, no, a lot of those. A lot of those are like short little series. Like his X Men run. Like I mean, not X Men run. His fan. The, the only thing I yeah, dislike about the way Hickman does his good. thing is he tries to do two stories at once, but they all interlinked into one story, like well, Avengers: New Avengers. And things like that. Fantastic Four, Future Foundation, yeah. Yep, yeah. But, but here's but like oh, they're see, bringing Future Foundation. Yeah, back. I saw that. I yeah, saw that one. yeah. Future Foundation that complemented the X Men though. Yeah, it was like the Detective Comics of the fan, or not X Men, the Fantastic Four. Yeah, it was like their version of Detective Comics. So it worked. Yeah. I mean, it, it did what it was supposed to do. Well, I mean, he wrote a lot of the Ultimate comics, so of course he was. About oh yeah, he did. He did Ultimate. <laughs> um, he did. He did the Ultimates volumes one and two, uh, which which that's the one where Reed Richards became the maker. He did Avengers versus X Men. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's that's the one I re remember him from most. Yeah, yeah. Okay, which I actually dug that. I thought oh, it was yeah. okay. Uh, they put too much hype into it for what what we got. I don't feel the payoff was as good as the hype was building for Avengers for. versus X Men. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, but the death of Charles yeah. Xavier was just kind of like, meh. Yeah. yeah. However, no Hickman did Avengers versus awesome. X Men, did he? It's according to this, he did. No, I don't think he I don't only think Hickman wrote, wrote a couple of issues. I think it said yeah. four through six. Let me check. Hold on. No, no way. I was like, Hickman did not write. It's, the whole it's on his biography. Yeah. So. Oh, I was like, he didn't write all of Avengers versus X Men. I thought that. I don't think that was Bendis. I thought that was Bendis. Actually, Maybe it was. No, he wrote did four he do... and six. Oh, Hickman wrote four and six. Okay. What a weird. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, so Bendis has got one through three. Can you do four? Uh, we've yeah. already got John Romita Jr. on yeah. five. So you gotta do six. <laughs> yeah. That'd be kind of weird. Kinda <laughs> um. Yeah, no, yeah, that makes sense then. So, okay, so you're excited about what he's doing. I'm, 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 okay. I'm excited because I understand Hickman writing. Now, right. if you're a person that goes into Marvel Comics and you don't know how Hickman writes, you're going to get bored out of your mind. That's, that's the problem. No, it's, and I agree. Mm -hmm. I loved yeah. Avengers and New Avengers. I love what he did with Secret Wars. I yeah. lo I've loved his Fantastic Four run. I don't dislike Hickman, but he, it's, it's like Bendis. You yeah. got you got to be ready for the ride. You got to be ready for the whole. Because what yeah. you what people are going to find is they're basically going to come across stairs that go nowhere. Yeah. And they're, they're going to feel like they go nowhere. Right. They're going to come across. I mean, like during okay. So during Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, there was one point. I don't know if you remember, but it was one one chick who was the first chick to become a member of the Imperial Guard from the Shi'ar, and like it was a one shot comic, and it seemed like it had nothing to do with anything whatsoever. Right. But then like she joins, and it's basically a way to explain her origin and why she's on the Avengers and New Avengers later on. Right. And then you have like uh, like a, a story about like a rogue planet. That basically like comes crashing into Earth, or at least comes crashing toward Earth, and you have to like stop it. And it's like, yep. well, what in the heck does it have to do with anything? And then you get to the Captain America segment where he meets Franklin Richards 500 years in the future, and Franklin says like, this exists, like like we sent that to you because like that's just part of a series of events that will lead to the Avengers in right. 50,000 years, whatever it is that they end up being. That so, was like, pretty cool. That Captain was America really cool. being yeah. flung into the future. That was yeah. And Groot turning into the giant. tree. The giant tree. Yes. Yeah. And then like, what was it? It was who was it that was going to go eat his balls and didn't know they were balls? It was it was like Hawkeye or something like that. Yeah, like, it was yeah. these little balls hanging from the tree, and he's like, "No, don't eat those. <laughs> those are not edible." <laughs> oh, he's great. like, "Eat one of these." <laughs> yeah, it was funny. No, that was a good run. Um, so with the oh yeah yeah, I was, I was trying to think. I lost my train of thought in the whole thing. Yeah. So you are saying you you prefer now if you. You don't like what Matthew Rosenberg's done right now. You feel he's like crammed no, too no, much. No, 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 no. It's not that I don't like what Matthew Rosenberg has done. I think his writing is spectacular. Right. And I think the way he writes the X Men, especially Cyclops, is spectacular. He's on Uncanny right now. Uncanny, right? yeah, okay. yeah. So he's he's doing the one where uh, Cyclops and Wolverine had to reform the X Men team. And then they're like, like, "Hey, no one's going to be leader, but I'm going to still act like leader and get mad at you when you're not treating me like the leader, yeah. even though we just did a full issue on 
no I'm not the leader. leader. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's he's the leader. There's always a leader. Oh yeah. All right. There's that's the way. I mean, it's just a full right now is pretty much a full group of everyone that has been the leader at some point. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly it. And so so too I was, many cooks. Too many cooks. Too many cooks. Yeah. Too many too many cheese and not enough Indians. But uh but yeah no so so I like what, the problem that I had with his run on on this is forever whatever it is is that it was it had way too many callbacks and way too many Easter eggs and like and and just. Referenced way too much. I felt like it was it was doing that intentionally though, because the X Men had been on such a derailed path for the last like five, ten, six years. You can go you can go conspiracy theory and say, oh my god, Marvel didn't want anything to do with it. You can say they didn't have a budget. The mm -hmm. books kept going. Yeah, I felt like I felt the problem with X Men was someone went, hey, you can keep doing X Men, but you can't use Wolverine because we killed him. Right. You can't use Cyclops because we killed him. But you, okay, but <laughs> you got an old Logan though. <laughs> Everyone can use that guy. Here's, a, here's the thing though: like you've been wandering through the desert for for you know a week, and you're on the vo on the border of dehydrated, mm -hmm. and you find a local town. They don't back up to you with a dump truck of water. They nurse you back to health. <laughs> and, and, and take, yeah. Water. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> yeah. No, they don't. They don't just drop you in a giant lake, like a freshwater lake, and right. just say, "Drink up, buddy." No, they they nurse you back to health. And that's that's the way this is. Like the X-Men have uh, it's no secret the X-Men have been treated like trash. Yeah. For yeah. the last, you know, a couple of you know, last few years or so. I feel yeah. like the only was, good X-Men comic that's that happened was X-Men Red. That oh, I, I was love truly Red. like this Red was, was great. Amazing. All the others are garbage. I, what I, I loved, happened to Black? Oh, no, no, no. no, no they, the, Black... the best part about that is they did like the uh, side ones for all the individual characters. Yeah, to set up the yeah. team. And then later on, they're also like, oh, by the way, that stuff is still in uh, continuity because in Mr. and Mrs. X, when they're with Mojo, yeah. they reference the fact that he had that love interest. Yeah. X Men Black Mojo, yeah. No, the, the X Men Black, those were only designed to ever be one shots. They were. They what happened to the team? No, there, there I thought was, it was no, going to be an yeah, actual. No, no, they, they they said that they said that like the reason why you had Claremont writing it and why you had these guys because X Men Black was supposed to be the build up to Uncanny X Men. Okay. Yeah, so you understand what's going on with the characters and, and of, like their current state of things. None of those people are in Uncanny right now, are they? I assume they were supposed to be. <laughs> they, they may have. I, I can, <laughs> not I, anymore. Because I truly believe that Uncanny well, did not Juggernaut start is. out with the idea. Juggernaut's part of the Uncanny. Is in the Uncanny. He joined the Uncanny. Oh, yeah. yeah. He yeah, is. He joined yeah. I, I firmly believe that Uncanny was not intended to end so that Hickman can come in. No, yeah, I guarantee you. Oh, just yeah. like I, do, I find it very weird that they would have had Scotty Young, of all people, on Deadpool just mm. to end it. Just to end it, yeah. Yeah, and things like that. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Just like yeah. X-23 had kicked off a whole new run with a new direction only to end it. Like, I yeah. feel like all of this was called Honestly, early. I'm kind of glad it's ending. It's, yeah, not, it's not my favorite. It was okay, man. I was I was around for the first couple issues and, or first couple arcs. I was arcs so and hyped for the X-23 comic and then they never even explained why she's X-23 again. Yeah, well, because Wolverine's back. Well, exactly. But I still wanted need, like so. something for them to say like, <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to let him do that and I'm going to be X-23 again. Not, you know what? I'm now... Well, it's, yeah. like, it's like my complaint name. with Professor Hulk in the movie. Like they they missed the middle ground where we get the explanation as to how we got to yeah. this. Oh point. no, you got you got the explanation. It was we talked it out and now we're okay. Yeah, it, no, was, it's bullshit. it was a ten that second that, explanation. <laughs> yeah. Was that actually in the movie? That was in the movie. He sits down. He's like, "Oh, oh in I the movie. talked it out." And he's eating the bowl of eggs. Like, yeah. we, we talked I thought you were talking about X twenty three, and I was like, "I completely missed that." No, the only thing she said in that one. I talked to Wolverine, and he said he's okay with it. He said he wants to be Wolverine now, and I said, "Okay, well, that's fine." I'll go back to the name from when I was a killer that I hated myself. That's totally. Normal. Killed my mom okay. and everything. So yeah. with you here, Rob, discussing yes. the X-Men and you getting super hyped and excited, I I'm got a excited. list from Newsrama of the 10 best X-Men stories. Uh, I want to see if you know these and if they're the best. Okay. And I see you looking down, making the face of the first one. Gifted. <laughs> I'm curious how many of these. There I was know. only one good moment that came out of Gifted, and that was Return of Colossus. Now, it's one of the, oh no, it's one of the coolest things. Okay. <laughs> but the only reason why it matters is you had to have read The Death of Colossus, right? So right. Like, in the mid-1990s, Marvel had this idea called the Legacy Virus, AIDS for mutants. The problem is Marvel didn't know what to do with it. And the, no, it wasn't even, it wasn't even 1990s. It was probably in the late 80s. And like, it hung around forever. Not that it was in the 90s. And it wasn't until the early two. No, it wasn't until 1997, 98, or 99. Go, that they, he'll that be they, back in a minute. If, yeah. You, yeah. if you have not it forgotten, was, Rob Swanson has those, those little two oh, out yeah. there. He has to wield them all. He's back. got a I circle don't, back. I don't see, <laughs> circle back. <laughs> you see, here, there was there was like a four or five year long window. When the legacy virus was a thing with there, and it was like killing people in the background, but they were just like there. And so it's essentially was there. the whole Terrigen Mist thing before they decided to make the Terrigen Mist kill. Yes and no. Um... I mean, yeah, in terms of like how it spread and affected people, but it right. was it was it was essentially AIDS, and so so because of that, like eventually Colossus comes, like Beast creates a cure, 
And he's like, the only way for this cure to exist is for somebody to inject themselves with it and create antibodies. Like, well, let's pick Wolf Rain because he has a healing factor <laughs> and like it worked in the cartoon. Why but have they never used Deadpool in that same role? Because he's not a mutant. Just experiment on him. No, he is a mutant though. Uh, it depends the on their run. Well, he's, it, he's right. It does I mean, I guess, he's, he's got Wolverine's healing factor, so I guess uh, sometimes yeah, they cl- like sometimes make him a mutant. mutant sometimes, sometimes, sometimes he's an experiment. experiment. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, we'll we'll roll with it and just say he's one or the other. Right. But uh, but anyway, so Colossus injects it into himself, and then Colossus dies, and so it's just like, oh man, dude, Colossus died. And like at the at the time, no man. Okay, here's the thing, man. <laughs> at the time, dude. At the time when Colossus died, it was like. My God! Like it was, it was insane. I was like, "Dude, it's Colossus!" And so, anyway, so Josh Whedon brings him back. Right. And just, this, just, this, here's the name of this episode: Comics Explain Schools Us and X Men. Okay. Oh, yeah. well, <laughs> well, we, can, we, can, we can go with that. We can go with that. So no, there's there's this uh, there's this amazing moment. This this amazing thing. Like they they track down this guy, whatever it is, who led to like the death of one of the kids of the school. Anyway, they track this guy down. And like they're going through his fortress or whatever, and like things are going crazy, and like like Kitty Pride's running for her life, and like she runs into this door as it opens, and this door's standing there, and it's just Colossus, and like she's she's totally shocked, right? Because like they were dating and they were in love and everything, right. so she's like, holy cow! She puts like her hand to her chest and just sits there, like in total shock. Colossus runs, like she phases and then phases back, and it's just like in shock the whole time, right. and like and like there's this, it's like this beautiful like three panel spread where it's just like Colossus runs through her, Colossus gone, and she's just standing there, and then like. He's like beating the hell out of this guy in the background. You can see like little marks, like oof, ow, you know. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's these hilarious little things. But uh, no, it was gifted. Like it was, the arc was okay, but it, I, I didn't, I didn't think it was that great. Would you put it as number right. ten on a list of the but top ten greatest X Men stories, according to Newsarama? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I feel like we need to hear the rest of these. All right, okay, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go with the number rest nine. Of is Wounded Wolf, Uncanny X Men 205. Uh, 200 uh, it's the story where, uh, where Logan Wolverine. finally fought Lady Deathstrike and her Reavers. And he had to kill her. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, actually. Do I know that? Uh, I would say no, it's... Old. No, I would say it's way before the, your time. No, no I'd okay. say it was in the top 10 greatest Wolverine stories. But you wouldn't put it in But not time. in X-Men stories. No. Okay. okay. Well, I mean, Wolverine... Do you count him? Like honestly, no. I don't count Wolverine. Or I don't. No, I do. I do now. not count. I, I count Wolverine as X Men insofar as he's part of the team. But when you're talking about Wolverine stories, yeah, mm, oh, totally they're definitely different. different. No, totally I've, different. I've always yeah. counted X Men, uh, Wolverine, and Deadpool. Like, yes, they're X Men. Yeah, yeah, but they're just Marvel superheroes. Yeah, well, they, yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like they, they, they're on the team. But right. like, I mean, you could remove them from the X Men, and like their comics would still sell. Right? Yeah, and they would still. Well, you it's kind of like Spider Man. Spider Man is technically an Avenger for a good chunk of his run right. since yeah. the two thousands. But no one goes, Spider Man's an Avenger. It's yeah. right. Spider Man. Oh, and he's an Avenger right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Avengers yeah. a symbol and Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number eight, and I know you love this one. And let me ask you, did you ever finish Age of Apocalypse on your channel? <laughs> what is wrong with you? Know what they did? They're not listening. Are to you 10, sure this is the ten no, best? They're listening. They're listening to ten. The ten stories that we know. Of. Like the only ten stories we it's anybody at Newsarama. Yeah. yeah let me. Month. Let me. Okay, it was you know made what, last even, month. I don't even want to see this. Okay. You know what Newsarama did? Newsarama went around to all their staffers and said, like, <laughs> give us an X Man story. And what they were like, like, yeah, they were like, um, I've heard of Age of Apocalypse. Okay, that works. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then throw it on the list. Yeah. We had a list like that. It was a Batman. What was it? The worst thing he's oh ever done? Oh, my God. That was the worst list. It was, and it was basically some writer had come up with a list of hearsay stories. Like, yeah. well, we don't like killing Joe because Barbara Gordon was raped. Like, did you read it? Because she yeah. wasn't. Yeah. Well, like, it was alluded it, to that she was. I'm pretty did, sure did that. Did you know that they, they released the pages? She was. She was? Oh, yeah. yeah they, okay. So, Black, look, quick tangent I thought she was. on that. They were going to release, until until Batman's penis came out, and WB <laughs> was like, whoa! Wow. DC Black, Black Label, was going to have the full version of Killing Joke, which involved that the page been... of her being raped. But, yeah, by, like, Joker and the Hitchman yep. and all that. Yeah, wow. And uh, I believe another page of him dying, of Batman actually killing Joker. They wow. pulled that page. Oh, wow. And they pulled the Barbara Gordon rape page. So, in the book, it's alluded to, but it doesn't happen. Yeah. I mean, like, just from the images that Jim Gordon sees, yeah, right. kind of if you, left if you to Google assume it, because they put the pages out on the internet. They were yeah. tweeted. Wow. Did they really? Yeah. They hadn't Damn. colored them yet. They were like, here's wow. the line work. And I was like, ah! Batgirl naked! <laughs> wow. Yeah, but that, not in a sexy way. I'm pretty sure that, that list also <laughs> turned into the writer having a huge bias against yeah. Kevin Smith. Oh, probably. There was, like, one of the whole it entries was, was just him bashing Kevin Smith for writing a Batman book. Yeah. It was 
Yeah. Kevin Smith doesn't write bad Batman book. He wrote it, one. It was the it was, it was yeah. a weird yeah. one, but I don't, it was I don't, not. He wrote a good, a good Daredevil list. too. Okay, right. no uh, Age of Apocalypse. Okay, here's the thing. Maybe it's not fair to say that Age of Apocalypse is not a good story in its entirety. No, the story sucked in terms of like is like that why segments. Stopped doing it. Yeah, because it is blew. it still unfinished on your channel? No, I finished it. I was like, it, look, here's the thing. Like I started that and I was like, let's get into Age of Apocalypse, everybody. And I was like, that's <laughs> right. This story is as bad as I remember. I was like, and then it's done. And that that was basically it. I'm actually doing that. We went there and did. A cleanup recently. That's when yeah. I renamed the RBEs to come experiment. But we also got rid of a lot of the old like promo videos and channel updates. And I like really that. should do that. We went there and just like pulled everything down up. and then yeah. cleaned all the playlists up. Yeah. And I noticed so many stories that I never finished. Yeah. yeah. So like I put up that Teen Titans today and someone's like, this is so old. I'm like, just bear with me. We're going to catch up. He fights Deathstroke soon. <laughs> it's going to be like four uh, weeks. Oh, of Teen was Titans. that the premiere one that you did? Yeah. Okay. Because I was looking at that and I was like, <laughs> months ago yeah, I was like, and I, the person commented they're like this video is so old Betty and I'm like bear with me we're, the team's gotta do some stuff we're gonna get the death stroke <laughs> yeah I, I like we need like I, I'm catching up on some story Batman uh, No Man's Land's coming back we're gonna do more spider you never finished No Man's Land I never did okay like we when get when, like so far into that of yeah. like weekly to oh, see here's God. the thing like when God like the final season of Gotham kind of would have been the time to well, no we did that. it and it got no views oh and, yeah. and that, we started it to do that Oh, around oh, the time okay. the algorithm was trashing both of us. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we both kind of were cutting back on videos to fix the algorithm. Yeah, I started uploading three days a week and it just, it worked for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's what we did. Yeah. But since I was doing that, series that weren't performing were not going out. Yeah. yeah. So I cut No Man's Land. But now that we're, now what I'm doing is I'm going through, best one yet. This is the best one I found so far. Mm -hmm. We got halfway through Wolverine Goes to Hell. You never stopped. finished it? <laughs> The Greg Rucker Wolverine run? Yeah, Wait. I have no idea why. Are we're... you sure? Yeah, because it goes to Dr. Rot, which we have coming out next week now. Wow. <laughs> and then it goes... and do, you, do you want to know how old that is? That was back when I was editing the videos about like more than <laughs> wow. a year ago. I, I'm pretty sure that's our <laughs> oldest. So I like front loaded that and Teen Titans. Yeah. Because Teen Titans are fighting Deathstroke. So I'm like, let's, let's get to that. Yeah. Jeez. And I'm like, Wolverine goes to hell. We probably should finish that. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Okay, well, it, now it will be the time to do it. It not either. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, now's the time to do it because you're literally talking about everybody's asking about X Men now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody's talking about X Men. Um, but no, okay. So, so Age of Apocalypse had good moments. Like, so what you, you had. Um, this will be. Just for me right now, because I'm home. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't think it was. I don't think it was the New Mutants. It was. It was a team that Colossus ran with Kitty Pride. They were like militant, right? right? Like Colossus, like he ran those kids with an iron fist. Um, I think it was Generation X. I think is the one that Colossus ran. Okay. But basically, like they had to. Like they were like, we're gonna infiltrate Apocalypse's base, and like like they did, and like and like literally all like most of the, like pretty much all the team except for uh, Colossus got left behind, and he was like deuces and just bailed out and <laughs> left him there. Oh, it was it was nuts. I was like, dude, Colossus was horrible, and like he was a terrible person. But no, I would not put that in the top ten X Men stories of all time. No way. Okay, so number seven is Mutant Genesis X Men one through three. I believe that's Claremont's run when he started it. Not X Men one through three. Yeah, Mutant Genesis it. probably X Men volume two issues one through three. No, it, it just says it literally says one through three and has a cover of one. I mean, you're the X Men expert. Yeah, that's that's Jim Lee's run. So they got it wrong. That's uh, so the list doesn't even have accurate oh information. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, it was written by Chris Claremont, drawn by Jim Lee. Okay, you can tell by the art. That's how Jim Lee used to draw back then. Yeah, no, right. I, and then Chris Claremont still left like, like, like six that. issues in or something like that. Um, oh, definitely. Yeah, X Men Volume Two, Issue Number One, the first arc. Yes. That's not. Yeah. Oh, it, you mean? It, uh, I know what you mean. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It brought it brought Magneto back to being a bad guy. Like, no, it was it was that was okay. I'll give him that. Okay. That was legit. Number six is Life and Death One and Two, Uncanny X Men One Eighty Six and One Ninety Eight. Life and Death did, One and Two. Did I, they just decide not to do anything recent? Life that was not part of the Phoenix. <laughs> well, it was recent the Phoenix X Men hasn't had anything good. Life and Death shows a Storm who's struggling with the loss of her powers, but eventually finds strength in the situation. That's uh, that I think is loss, when forgiveness, coping, and survival in the face of trauma. One eighty six through two hundred. It says one eighty six and one ninety eight. So I think it's oh, one eighty six and one ninety eight. I think it's two solo stories that link together. That's not the one where she's de aged. So that's no, not the no, intro to Gambit. She's got the Mohawk on the cover. Lo the loss of her powers. I wonder if that's the one where she starts dating uh, Forge. When she gets into a relationship with Forge. So you can you can neither confirm right. nor deny. I can neither confirm nor deny that one. Yeah, <laughs> I don't remember that one. Number five is X Men Season One. The animated series? Nope. Dennis okay. Hopeless is run. That looks like the all new X Men, the young X Men team. No, nah, it wasn't. This is this was this was before that. Um, oh, Dennis, that was that's that was like a reboot of the original five before they tried that. Yeah, oh, no, okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. 
<clears throat> and no, that's garbage. Because the reboot of the original five was called X Factor <laughs> by Walter and Louise Simonson. So, or really by Bob Layton and then Walter and Louise Simonson. But no. Uh, all right. Number four is X-Men. Oh, I know this is on your list because every goddamn weekly pull you bring it up. God loves man kills. Yes. <laughs> that should be number one. That, I would make that number one. Oh, dude, God loves man kills. No, here's, okay, here's, you know what made God loves man kills so good? There were no supervillains. They weren't fighting like Mr. Sinister or something like that. They were right. fighting a guy who was a religious fanatic and thought God wanted him to kill mutants and then could like convince Wait, people. William yeah. Stryker. That was, his, that was his introduction. Yeah. And like, and, and literally he was just a guy. And like, and here's the, here's the coolest thing. The story doesn't end with some great big huge battle or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Cyclops gets into a debate with William Stryker on national TV and like corners him. And so William Stryker like pulls out a gun to shoot him. And like oh, a cop shit. shoot, yeah, a cop shoots him and like, like injures him and then they take him to jail. But like it ends with like a debate. Like it, it's, it, was, it was so cool. It was, it was one of the best stories ever. Yeah, I love God Loves Man Kills. Number three is E for Extinction. New X-Men, 114 to 116. Mm, number three. Grant Morrison. Yeah. Oh. Grant Morrison can get weird at times. That was, no, that was Grant actually. Morrison. Grant Morrison. Grant Morrison. Here's, here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Grant Morrison's new X-Men run was actually legit. It wasn't like any, it wasn't like Green Lantern is now where it's just like kind of, you know. Green Lantern dude, I feel right like now is yeah. Sometimes I love the issue and sometimes I'm like, I don't know what's going on in the issue. And sometimes I'm like, well, the art was good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's, it's not one of those stories where you have to like pop acid to understand it. Like it's, it's nothing, it's nothing like that. Like, like his X-Men run was, the, was really solid. Did you read Green Lantern 3 where he no. fought God? I st- yeah, I, the, oh, he, yeah. Yeah. I was, I, oh, I wanted God. like, I wanted to like, if it was Literally. standalone, I would have done it and just call like Green Lantern punches God. And yeah. like, and like that would have been it. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, no. Okay. So, so. ES4 Extinction was actually legit, right? So that introduces Cassandra Nova. And okay. that's, that's where Cassandra Nova takes the son, grandson, nephew, anyway, some descendant of Bolivar Trask and like takes him Is out. Is Trask into, like, um, a dwarf in the actual? No, he's full. He's, okay. he's, a, he's a tall guy. Because that was Peter Dinklage in the movie, wasn't yes. it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. I wanna, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, no, I was just the, thinking that because you brought up William Stryker and I'm like, that was Peter Dinklage. No, no, he was Trask. Yeah, he then, was Bolivar Trask. Yeah. And then I was trying to remember um, what Bolivar Trask looked like in the comics. Yeah, no. So, so, Bolivar, so what you end up finding out is that when Bolivar Trask, because he was the original creator of the Sentinel program. And okay. so when Bolivar Trask created the Sentinels, what he did is he created wild Sentinels that were never fully activated. Nothing ever happened with them because they were considered too unpredictable, dangerous, couldn't be, you know, right. whatever. So what ends up happening is he ends up taking like the, the, like the descendant of, or I'm sorry, Cassandra Nova takes like his son, nephew, whatever, into the wild and then like basically uses his voice pattern to reactivate the Sentinels. And then like once they're under her control, she kills him. Then she sends them to Genosha, which is a mutant haven for like yeah. 16 million mutants. And the Sentinels massacre them all. Like they, they, they kill 16 million mutants. On the island. That, that's why, like, whenever you read, like, House of M, Genosha is, like, totally destroyed and decimated. Yeah. That was all because of ES4 Extinction. So, so yeah, like, it was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, that, they that story was Genosha really good. a lot. Yeah. I think okay. that, because that's where she goes back in X-Men Red. Yep. And then she basically, yeah, yeah. Like, Cassandra uh, Nova comes back, yeah. Yeah, that, that's where they people. reference, yeah, that's yeah. where they reference her actions in Genosha and killing the mutants and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that was all ES4 Extinction. Um, I don't know, I'd put it top five. I don't know if I'd put it top three. You ready for number two? Okay. I don't know. I actually don't know how you feel about this story. You want to tell them what it is? Is it the Onslaught Saga? No. Days of Future Past. Uncanny uh, X Men one forty one. They have that listed as number two. Two. I'll number take two. that. And it's, take it's, it. it's yeah. only the two issues. It's not the, the like how it's. See, that's out. that's right. that's the thing. Like one forty one and one forty two were the two key issues. Actually, one thirty nine and one forty lead into it. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. So you can, it depends. Like when we covered it on the channel, we only did one forty one, one forty two because it's like well, that's the core plot. Yeah, that's that's the core. Yeah. Like all you really need to do is read those. Yeah. But. Yeah, You'll no, take I'll, that as a number two? I'll take that as number two. Number right, one is the right. Phoenix Saga, Dark Phoenix Saga. <laughs> yeah. Why would it be? It, it always it's is. It's gotta go. Hey, Rob, can yeah. you guess number one? It always but, is. Like everybody, but it's, uh, that's the most popular one. Honestly, I would make God Loves Man Kills the number one best story from X-Men. The not number one. Dark Phoenix? Not Dark Phoenix. Dark- See, the problem I have with Dark Phoenix, I was talking to John this morning, the guy who tattooed my arm and gave me all the blue. Uh, <laughs> X-Men's one of the few comics he remembers from the 90s. Mm-hmm. So we were talking and he's like, I don't, I don't agree with the, 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 the movie they're doing. Because they didn't build up Jean Grey the way the comics did, so that she matters. That exactly. Yeah. That's a, that's why. It, that's that is that. It, John is right. That's <laughs> why. That is why Phoenix and Dark. Okay, Stanley and Jack Kirby wrote Jean Grey. She sucked. She was always like, "I need help doing anything because I can't do it on my own." And and like like she was like the damsel in distress, right? Like yeah. couldn't do anything on her own. So Claremont's like, "Okay, that's stupid." So like he brings her in and he's like, "Let's build her up and then crush her, like like literally like sit around in a bang like like mm-hmm. yeah." Like, Crush that whole ideology. So, so like within the first like, let's say he took over in issue number ninety 
95 or 96. And, and within four issues, Phoenix Saga. And then like within like 30 issues after that, Dark Phoenix Saga. So you're talking yeah. about over the span of about two or three years, it was the rise and fall of Jean Grey. Yeah. Right. And, and dude, like, like it, was, it was crazy because Marvel wanted to keep her dead. But like she was so popular, like Marvel had to bring her back. That's why it turned into like the, the Fantastic Four founder in the bottom of Jamaica Bay and it wasn't actually right. Phoenix or it wasn't actually Jean and it was a Phoenix. But, but still, like it was, uh, I mean, Phoenix, Dark Phoenix, I would make it number two. I would put God Loves Man Kills as number one because the villain's so tangible right. and relatable. Why do, well, you this, think, why do you think these these lists never actually reference Phoenix to Dark Phoenix? They always go Dark Phoenix well, to the because, best because technically it's everyone it is, likes the evil. That, that And technically it is all one cohesive saga. Because, yeah. because what you have are a bunch of interim stories in between. Like you can cut all those out. Okay. And then you can just go from Phoenix into Dark Phoenix. Now, a lot of those are important because it shows why the Shi'ar shows up and it right. shows like all that. And, but, but still, like you can, you can maybe read like two or three of those comics in between and then just get rid of it. But mm -hmm. that's the thing. Like, like Claremont, Claremont wrote, right? So, so you would start with the Phoenix Saga and then halfway through the Phoenix Saga, Nate Gray's born. And then like, like Cable's born. And then like, like, I mean, it's not actually done that way, but like you would, you would go through and basically what happens in the middle of one saga won't really happen until you get like three or four story arcs later. Yeah. But you have to have read every everything in between in order to really understand it. Otherwise you'll kind of be left hanging. So yeah. you'll be like, why? Like, who is this character? You know, yeah. who's destiny and what, what matters? You know, and it gets weird, but. Okay. I'm going to go through a quick one now. Okay. To get your opinions on these. All right. The 10 worst things done to the X-Men. Oh, okay. this will be good. Okay. okay. This will be interesting. You double, because Rob's not here often. I feel like we got to double down. 10 right. worst things that happened to the X-Men. I'd say the, like the Inhumans thing will be number one. New <laughs> X-Men's end. Event. After the X-Men's latest recruit, the incredible uh, mutant Zorn was revealed to be Magneto in disguise. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate when they go, here's a new villain. It was this person all along. Like Requiem? Requiem, yes. Requiem, okay. That Requiem would have been so, so close. No, here's, no, here's the problem. Is, is, and then see, here's the funny thing. They actually introduced Zorn later on. Like, he was an actual character later oh, on. Oh, yeah, he shows up in the uh, all-new X-Men when they have all the future stuff come yeah, back. Yeah, he's like, he has, like, the, the head of a star. No, but like, he showed up before that. Like, there was actually XORN Zorn later on. Um, no, that's be that was, that was, <laughs> that was bad. Okay. Same I'm, thing, by the way, this is Newsarama again. I, I, okay, I agree with that. Okay, number nine is Schism. What? Schism is one of the worst things to happen to the X-Men. No! <laughs> Ab no! Worst things happen to them, not worst stories. That is a good that is a good clarification. But at the same time, that's, that's Okay. That's I, very, very I, I, liked, I liked Schism though. Number not number what eight? I mean, eight? it was an X-Men Civil War. And like like Cyclops gets his own X-Men team and Wolverine gets his own X-Men team, yeah. and that's it. Like I liked it. Number eight is it. the mutant massacre. Oh, that should be number one. No, no, no. Worst not, things done to them? No, not really, because that happened to the Morlocks. Are we talking about to the X-Men or to the mutants? X-Men. Okay, no. That, that, I mean, that, the X-Men were there, but like they weren't the ones who were massacred. Right. So it was the Morlocks, and nobody cared about the Morlocks. Number so, seven is the Mutant Registration Act. Ooh, that's a good one. To have on this list? Right. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, one this, is. This one's definitely like I mean, the I don't worst know if I things. I would have made that more like, not but worst we'll, we'll, we'll see. Like, I'm curious what the rest of the list is, but... Just off what I've heard, I would put that, yeah, I'd definitely put that above everything else we've seen yeah. so far. Number six is the Terrigen Bomb. Yeah. That definitely was a mess, mess with the X-Men, because that wiped I out. I mean, it almost pushed them to the brink of extinction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, okay. Oh, well, I know you like this one. Yeah. The Legacy Virus. Yeah, I mean, see, that and the Terrigen Bomb, I would put within the top three. Depending on what, on what they have, what else they have. <laughs> <to put. laughs> this, is the, this is the best one. Oh the future. God. Yes, that's right. The <laughs> entire future. <laughs> the future is the worst thing to happen to the X-Men? Age of Apocalypse, Days of Future Past. Every future yeah. is the worst thing to ever happen to the X-Men. Let's they're, be honest, every not wrong. time the future comes back, they're like, you screwed up. You yeah. ruined the future. You're all going to die. And this oh is hell. Yeah. yeah, it's literally cables showing up. Like, like, hey, guys, like in five years, like all of you are going to be pushed to the extinction. And like, here's what happened. So don't let that happen. You know? oh, it's a recurring yeah. theme with them once a year. Um, the Dark Phoenix Saga is number three. Oh, yeah. Okay, I would definitely put that. Yeah, because right. Jean Grey, yeah, I mean, she put the X-Men, like, they had to fight the Shi'ar, and they, and, they, and they lost. The X-Men lost. I'm pretty sure the X-Men lost against the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. Um, I don't know. Okay, as, as a worst thing done to the X-Men, I'll agree with this. I don't, cause I, I was, I'm not a huge, huge fan of the story. Mm -hmm. I do like it, but not a huge fan. Phoenix Five and the Death of Xavier. 
Because Xavier was, yeah. he, even though I felt he was kind of useless at this point in the comics, he's still the it changed the big vibe. No, see, to I me, think. to me, it didn't matter because by that point, Xavier had been pushed out. Because Xavier, he was pushed out of the X Men after he came back from House of M. Yeah, and and Cyclops was like, me and Emma have been leading the team just fine. We don't need you. Leave and and was and like booted him out of his own team and said, yeah. you're not leading anything anymore. So he'd been a figurehead up until that point. So he didn't really matter. Wait, but is that the whole list? No, no, I got one more, but oh, I, okay. I, I don't need to read the list again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was Wait, like, now I forgot what it was. Hold on. Nope, House of M. I was going to say, that's got to be in no, there. No, that was the best thing to happen to me. <laughs> it was literally an alternate universe where they ruled the world. Right. But How she, was that? Well, the, the, what came no out of that was no more mutants. Yeah. Okay, that's called decimation. <laughs> <Yeah. Userama. laughs> that's you got a, the that's, name wrong. That's a whole arc unto itself. Yeah, that's it's it's yeah okay. M day, there you go. M day, there we yeah. go. Okay, yeah, M day. Okay, yes, that sucked. Yeah. <laughs> that was as close as they got to full on extinction. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I think it was because there was only like a hundred left, wasn't it? There were one hundred ninety eight left. It was basically yeah. like the X Men teams and supporting cast. <laughs> yeah, no, what all it right. was, yeah, that's what it was. Casada was like, let's get rid of all the ones that, except for the ones we like. It's like, well, how many <laughs> is that? Well, of the millions that we have, one hundred ninety eight. Right. We like that. Honestly, I think it was like 50, and they're like, well, let's just leave some wiggle room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got to bring in some you don't know. Just yeah. don't mention them for a while. We'll... We might need to like use them in future stories. So. All right. So here, here's my question. With, can, keeping all of that in mind, do you think Hickman is going to implement another one of these big worst things to happen to the X Men? To kind of start into his no, own. No, I can tell you exactly what Hickman's gonna do. Hickman's gonna take every Hickman is gonna take everything that's happened with the X-Men since Claremont wrote it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he's gonna consolidate everything. And he's and like what there's gonna be what he keeps and what he doesn't keep. Right. What matters and what doesn't matter. It'll it'll be like a total shuffle and reorganization of the X-Men. So some of it some of it'll say around, some of it won't. But I think it'll be uh, I, I think it'll be what the X-Men have needed for a long time. So no okay. mass killings? Of the X Men. I mean, maybe, maybe it'll maybe it'll be like maybe the, the main plot will a be team like or some two, but there'll be future. one left. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll be yeah, it'll just be the X Men. Uh, maybe there'll be like some future where like something really bad happens. But well, of course, the future is there. The future, worst yeah, the future is always the worst the thing. What do you, Deadpool and Wolverine, outliers, pretty much? Do you, how do you mm. think Hickman's going to incorporate them? Hmm. I don't think because they got to be shut down for a reason. So. Yeah. I feel like they should have just kept going on their own things. I could see one of them. And like them occasionally X bring as them in. As much as nobody wants to admit it, Deadpool is a part of the X-Men franchise. What, yeah. they, what they could do, what they might be doing, Hickman might be as part of his X-Men run, retconning the origin of Deadpool, changing it, and then Deadpool gets a new number one based off the work Hickman did. Uh, I don't know if he, with, with, with the, the movie line already lines yeah. up with the current origin. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. They've that's done true. so yeah, that's many yeah. revamps that's a good point, of yeah. them. Um, I don't. I mean, I guess they, they could just be bringing them closer in line with the X Men, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know why you would, because a comedic part of of, of Deadpool is like he always wants to be an X Man. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, no. <laughs> the the only time okay. we ever let you do that, you like, oh no, actually that was that was cool. The only time we ever let them do that, he actually helped them out. Yeah, and, and oh, like yeah. Cyclops wanted to kill him. But yeah, he's Cyclops like, I arranged him, yeah. it all. You win. Yeah. Yeah. That was the, one of the best things. Ever. That was one of the coolest things. Question for you. This actually got, made me think of something. So we know they're rebooting the X Men in the MCU, right? Yeah. And we know Hickman's probably going to restart something that lines up with what they're going to do in two or three years. Mm -hmm. Disney said Deadpool's not going to change from our rating. Do you think that they'll just keep Deadpool and he'll be the only guy that knows of the previous Fox universe? Oh, probably. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. he's the it only actor that's so going to well. stay. Yeah. Ryan yeah. Reynolds is the only one who's going to stay on board. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's, he's going to make some joke like he was bought by Disney. <laughs> like, I, I didn't know it was yeah. okay to still buy people. You know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or I could see him meeting the new. So you're the new Wolverine. No more Hugh Jackman. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or right. or he'd do something like like take Hugh Jackman's like what was in that face cut out and like put it on his face. Yeah. Right. And be like now Fixed you're Wolverine. <laughs> Either that. Or, exactly. <laughs> or he meets Captain America. He's like, weren't you on fire last time yeah, I met you? I, yeah. <laughs> Basically, use Deadpool as the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Explanation behind everything. Yeah, I think they could get away with that. Yeah. Especially if they let Ryan Reynolds just do his thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, it would work. I was just curious about that, what you thought on that. Oh, yeah, so definitely. what do you think? Okay, so Deadpool, I think they should have left alone, but he's obviously worked in. Do you think Wolverine is going to go off on his own own again? No, I think Wolverine, all that stuff's going to be consulted. I, honestly, I wouldn't even be surprised if, if Hickman changed the origin of mutants, if Hickman changed um, like like Sinister, and because he, he's talking about like how he's making Sinister a mutant, or at least supposedly that's what he wants to do, which that was never the case. Right. Um, I'm, I, I wouldn't be like surprised. I thing. No, he was engineered. He was, he okay. was, he was yeah. genetically modified. And he made clones, and yes. that's why we always see them. Uh, and that's how we get a Mrs. Sinister eventually. Yeah, he makes yeah, clones. Yeah, he, he, because he, he Marvel is yeah, like, how many, how many more nearly naked women can we have on the X-Men books? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, he does that. Well, yeah. No one likes as Sinister. Get him, boom. As you want. 
<laughs> that yeah. all new X Men run. This um, way, we'll get a Colossus with metal boobs eventually. <laughs> like this giant Russian woman named Olga. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll be what's her name from Overwatch. You yes, oh, yeah. Zarya. Zarya. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but no. So so I would say no. I think he's gonna. He's. He, I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna retcon it all. Like, like people are looking at it and they're like, well, he's going to bring X-Men back to Claremont's era. And that, I mean, I guess it'd be cool if he did. Honestly, I'm not that huge of a stickler on Claremont's run. But I think that, like, like he's going to, he's either going to consolidate or he's just going to change it all. Like, like create new origins, the whole nine yards. Like a total rework, right. restructure of the Something X-Men. that'll work better with the MCU. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I think that's what'll happen. I wonder I, if they're going to tie into what Jason that, yeah. Aaron's doing about discovering that we're all actually a virus and all that other Yeah, things. from the first the first yeah. celestial whatever. Loving what he's doing oh, yeah. Yeah. until he forgets he's doing it and does other plots. Yeah, it gets, <laughs> it gets a like little a weird. Have, have, you, have you noticed that? Like, yeah. it'll be like, we're doing the celestial celestials. It's a vampire series. Yeah. Civil yeah. War. We it's have almost Blade. like, it's Blade in. It's like, it's like Jason Aaron's like, so we're gonna do, um, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do the. I want this whole thing right here. This is the celestials, and then what if we just do vampires? Let's bring Blade. I mean, I mean, <laughs> but you can't tell me that the the Avengers and Blade fighting vampires is not badass. No, no, I agree I mean, it was with that. It was awesome. It was but bad. at least, like, because we've been comparing Justice League and Avengers because they're yeah. pretty close to the same concepts. Beginning of the universe, the whole nine yards. Right. And Justice League, every time they go away, it come it, like the plot actually wraps back into the main plot. Yeah. Well, Avengers is like, and now we're going to have a political debate with uh, the Wakandan nations. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and now we're going to have a battle against the defenders. Um, and now we're going to go right. talk to the Civil War. Loki will be back. Don't worry. <laughs> By the way, on the side, we've got uh, America with the Sol- uh, Squadron Supreme yeah. making their own <laughs> Avengers because Avengers mm. not a part of it anymore. I, dude, I am. <sighs> God, I love ta Coates, Captain America. Let me introduce you to the just, uh, Squadron Supreme. You know, that's, that's, that's really what that is. You know. but, I'm still not on board with Cap. Oh, dude, I love I've Captain. Lost, I've lost. I fell off that so long Really? Ago. Yeah. Why? I didn't even get on a Coates run. Why? I, I, I dropped off on Mark Wade's run. No, ta Coates' run is legit. Is it? Give it a yeah, shot. Give it a shot. Yeah, give it a shot. The problem with Captain America, I had the same problem with a lot of Superman books. It's, he works like, well in a team. But when it's solo, it's just the same plot. No, over no, no, no. Over. Okay, give give Tanahasi coat. Just give it the first arc. Okay. There's, there's huge callbacks to Ed Brubaker's run. All right. So give it give it all the right. first. I arc. I like Ed Brubaker. That was the whole, that was the Winter Soldier and all that other mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you like that, you'll love this one. Because you know I love the Winter Soldier. Although he doesn't, they don't know what the hell they're doing with him anymore. He has his own solo book now, but which no, is they, the done. weirdest. It was a book. miniseries. Oh, was it? Yeah. yeah it was and it oh. was didn't really feel like Winter Soldier. Yeah. It really did not. They don't feel know like what Winter they're doing. I mean, the fact they put him on this, the man on the wall, made you go, you don't know what you're doing with him. Mm-hmm. No, they, they 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 have no idea what to do with this character. I mean, just give him like a like. What do you do with Bucky Barnes? You know what they could do? They give him a mask like he's from Mortal Kombat. They send him into the Midwest with a crowbar. No, nope, that's Red Hood. <laughs> <laughs> just have him beat up soccer moms and <laughs> trash people's cornfields. Uh, you know I was going there. Yeah. Right? I, I, <laughs> uh, I mean, what do you do with Bucky? You don't throw him on an Avengers team because what's he going to do on an Avengers team? And he's not really an Avenger. Well, no, no. Actually, what, no, I can what you see do. them do that to try and make it line up a little bit with the MCU again. No, what you do is you create yeah, the you create like the again. Secret Avengers. Just bring back the Secret Avengers as like a Black Ops team. No, no, no. We got the Savage Avengers. <laughs> yeah, I could. Uh, Led by Conan. Are you guys reading Jason Aaron's Conan? Uh, no, no, Andy told Andy's me I need to though. It's it, really though. good, actually. Yeah. So I would. Yeah, why I would don't you want it. Conan on the Avengers? <laughs> is that a serious question? Yes. He was great in, in No Road Home, and then he stuck him in the Savage Land, and now he's hanging out with Punisher, and I think Moon Knight's on that team. Who else is on that Venom team? is on the team. Venom's on the team. Yeah. Which I'm, I'm Dr. still- Dr. Voodoo showed up at one point I still and have had to like, like a little, he's like, don't worry. Oh, there's ninjas? I've got my ninja voodoo doll. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? I, I still have to remind myself that Venom's running around without Eddie Brock. Wait, what's going on with that? You don't remember that? No, so episode, I'm, I'm very confused. Uh, no, what no, happened the, to the whole the, like no, okay, uh, carnage okay. thing. No, at the end of the oh, like, okay, unless 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 that a little he bit. was separated. Yeah, yeah, he was separated. As far as I'm aware, they haven't returned together. No, but he's not on his own, as far as I know. No, the Venom symbiote, like the Venom symbiote you see in War of Realms, that's just the Venom symbiote and no Eddie Brock. No, 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 the one the one in the War of the Realms. Where that's, where that's are you Eddie. seeing the symbiote? Are you reading Venom? No, I haven't. I've I've not. Because in I'm Venom, not on Eddie got another symbiote from Malekith. Yeah. Meliketh gave him one oh, that is no, all no, Eddie's yeah, no, rage. I'm like, no, that's from Meliketh. No, now I remember that from from War. Yeah, because he's got him on the leash. Yeah, and like, yeah, I remember, I remember that. 
But I'm, I'm talking about like the Venom symbiote that you saw. That unless Eddie rejoined with Venom sometime. No, no, no. Venom so too. Venom we discovered was basically an abusive relationship with Eddie. He was yeah. taking advantage of Eddie, telling him, telling him he had cancer. Yeah, yeah, like I, I know all that stuff. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm And then on the they Venom separated one. them so that yes. Eddie wouldn't die, and then Eddie walked off. Yeah, and then as far as I'm aware, Venom, the Venom symbiote has been operating by itself ever since. Where though? What book? Because as far as I know, I, I've ever read it doing all that. the appearances of Venom that have come after that. Unless, uh, with the exception of like, unless you see Eddie getting a symbiote. Yeah, the, no, that's the, actual, the immediate issue after Venom. He has that symbiote. He's running around in it. With a Venom symbiote. Yeah, it looks just like Venom with spikes. No, but the actual Venom symbiote, like the one that walked away after it, after it, like left Eddie, like got Eddie and the kids out of the building. It's far, the original did Venom it walk symbiote. away or is it still pinned? Because it had no, 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 no. It walked away. Like, like literally, like it rescues the kid and Eddie, and then it drops them off outside at the end of the yeah. Donny Cates. Run, okay, that's right. And yeah. then it, then it walks off and leaves, and like, and then it turns into somebody, hmm. and then that's it. Because I haven't seen it. I mean, I'm, I'm behind on War of the Realms. I've admitted to that. But yeah. I haven't seen it in anything yet. Well, see, I haven't read, I haven't read any of like, the Venom times from War of the Realms, so I might be wrong. I think <laughs> Venom... Well, what does our chat say? I think yeah. Venom's in chat, the uh, fighting for the Dark Bifrost. Yeah, no. Ven so so Melika's witches showed up, said, hey, you're Eddie Brock, you're good with Venom, we're going to give you a symbiote that taps into your own range. Is that a tie-in or is that part of the... No, it's a Venom story? book. So okay, I have a Donny Cates' run is on a hold. Yeah. It's not over. Yeah, for the War of Realms. Right. Yeah. There's four yeah. issues done by uh, Colin Bunn. Okay. He gets this like crazy symbiote version thing. Okay, that's the one that I'm not reading then. Okay, okay, and that explains that, the missing. It's going to tie back into Web of Venom, and then it's going to go back into Carnage, and we're going to go back to. Okay, cool. Because I kind of want like I kind of want to see that happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like, coming after War of the Rome. The that's cult of Carnage Cates and all that. Dude, dude, Donny Case is like he's hyping up his Carnage story. Well, he everyone's like you're off the book. What happened? He's like no, 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 no. I'm just not doing War of the Realms. Yeah, yeah. And so what they gave is they gave him a different Venom symbiote for that, which them. actually works out for him because it gives him four months roughly to like right. flush out. What do you want? Yeah, that actually yeah. works. Like okay, so quick. according to Demetra, the symbiote is in War of the Realms. Eddie's doing his own thing with the other group. Okay, uh, okay. so we're both right. That's yeah. what I thought. Okay, cool. So, the, so we have two Venoms. Okay, we have two Venoms basically, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, I thought that was the case. That's why I was confused. I'm like, Eddie just got a symbiote. Well, what well, are you talking well, about? Because that was my thought. My thought was like, okay, if, if Jason Aaron was going to give Eddie Brock the symbiote back, like he'd make a, make a big thing out of it. Right. You know, or at least you'd see it happen. It wouldn't just happen off panel. Like, oh, by the way, I got the symbiote back, guys. Yay. Like, it's not going to happen that you way. You would think that, but then we get the cosmic cube off panel and... Uh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that will, the Marvel, I will never let Marvel live that I know down. you won't. I know you won't. Between the Panels, they got the cosmic cube, they got the MacGuffin to fix the situation. Who does that in your story? Somebody trying to end it fast. Right. That, that, would was, be, that, was... that would be like a Justice League 25, they show up and they're like, oh, well, we solved the alternate dimension problem. Thank the God. Yeah. Thank God Starman showed up, and you're gonna be like, when did this happen? <laughs> it happened off panel. Yeah. <laughs> it happened between the issues. Oh, That's man. what I mean. Like, it made no sense. So yeah. I wouldn't even put it past Marvel to be like, Eddie got the symbiote back. Too bad you didn't read Web of Venom 29, 50 billion. <laughs> if you had, you'd know. Yeah, exactly. If you had known. But, but we yeah. made it a limited uh, print. Only 50 issues ever came out. And Donny Cates himself peed on each of them to make them <laughs> worth money. <laughs> I mean, I would. I would. Okay. Would you? Would you? Would you buy... If Donny Cates wrote a wrote a single Venom story, only one was made. No reprints, no nothing. Of course I'd buy that. You can buy it, but he pees on it first. Done. Seriously, you would buy Donny Cates Yes! Pee. I would buy Donny Cates You Donnie know, Cates I'm going to tweet that to Donny Cates. No, you got to clip this and tweet it to him. Yeah, just so you know. Comic, comic story historian is... would buy your pee, Donny Cates, because you're amazing. <laughs> You're a genius at everything you write. Donny Cates, I love, I, your I love you. I love you, Donny Cates. I'm not, I'm not buying your I, lo I love your Guardians of the Galaxy. I love your Venom, your, Dude, your Carnage. Dude, Guardians of the Galaxy. You know what's going to yeah. be funny? He, he has responded to me only one time ever on Twitter. Now he's going to know who the fuck I am. And he's going to be like, that's yeah, that yes. weirdo. That's that the guy that wants my pee. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, dude. His, his, Guardians, <laughs> his Guardians of the Galaxy is crazy, man. It's so good. Right. Like the last oh, one yeah. Testament of oh, Thanos. Yeah. Dude, it's Amaze balls. Well, the next arc is the death of Rock Rocket Raccoon. Is it? Okay, what? someone answer me this one real quick. Because somebody tweeted me, they're like, what happened to Rocket Raccoon? I'm like, he didn't die? Because they're promoting, no. like, because Gamora shows up and they're, they're like, well, what's going on with Rocket? And they're like, we don't talk about Rocket. I'm like, do we he's, just not? Rocket's just on vacation on Earth. He was in no road home last I checked. <laughs> no, I'm pretty sure he's on the planet where Gamora is right now. And he has like a huge stronghold, just completely. But what I'm saying is, like, he's not dead that? or evil. He just. He, I could have he, sworn that was in the comic. Was it in Guardians? I think so. He, but he he was off on No Road Home, and then he flew hmm. off. No big issues. Yeah. Matter of fact, he even wrote like you know, be an Avenger, cross off his bucket list kind of deal, and then 
And then they're like, oh, we don't talk about Rocket. I'm like, what did Rocket do? He crashed into a meteor and died. <laughs> yeah. That's the that's the comic of Death of Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. He crashed the end. Yeah, he crashed into, <laughs> the, he crashed into like Galactus's leg. And like, Could you just, imagine? It's a one-page comic. <laughs> yeah. The Death of Rocket Raccoon. And it's just... <laughs> oh, dude, I would die. I mean, and then the you turn the page to the so backside, good. it's his grave. Yeah. yeah. With the Guardian sad. Rest in peace, Rocket. <laughs> you lived well. I don't well. know. With Marvel, they will have him uh, flying off, and then he'll die off panel. Yeah. And then it'll be the grave. No, no, no. He'll fly off, and then we'll have five tie-ins that don't involve Rocket, <laughs> yeah. and then we'll come back to his death. No, it'll be the five tie-ins that deal with like like the aftermath, right? It'll be, it'll be, like, it'll be like when Superman died, right? Like, like <laughs> right. fallen Rocket, you know? And it's like fallen Rocket, Peter Quill, Star-Lord, a fallen Rocket like Gamora and Fallen Rocket Drax and Drax is just like not even giving a damn. I don't move. <laughs> yeah, I am invisible. <laughs> All right, well, this everyone's given an F to Rocket, and I think this is where we should leave it. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this comics experiment yeah. show that we do right here on Comic Story and every Saturday. Bring it right to you. It's our podcast. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, SoundCloud, just about every source possible. But if you don't want to wait for any of this, go to our Patreon to get early access, along with a dozen other podcasts that we pull off. Slight exaggeration, it's more like five, but hey, whatever, it's podcasts for only a dollar. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash comic stories where you can go to get that and if you want more of Rob you, one if you keep asking where's Rob we have to delay his next appearance because that's yeah. what the advertisers want apparently advertisers like they, you, you guys keep asking the advertisers where I'm at so they keep holding out for the episode where I show up I have no ads this week yeah, yeah. because they're waiting for a Rob so we give them Rob when they're not looking <laughs> yeah that's exactly what this is like, surprise <laughs> <laughs> Rob was here Rob will return again <laughs> as a guest don't worry okay but if you can't wait, go check out his channel, Comics Explained. Mm -hmm. Or you can check out, if you, go, if you go to YouTube search and search According to Rob, that's his vlog channel. Yeah. Well, actually, I just renamed it just Robert Jefferson. Right, but oh, if you do According yeah. to Rob, all your videos come up. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See? That's algorithm right there. Good thinking, man. Good thinking, man. <laughs> uh. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And uh, we got to give a sign-off or something. Mm. Oh yeah, you can also catch it live on twitch.tv slash eligible monster every Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. I yes. dubbed that portion. <laughs> what? I dubbed that portion. I just kept talking. Just like I dubbed that portion. Like those old samurai yeah, films? Exactly. <laughs> old karate <laughs> movies? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, you want to give them a piece, uh, Rob? Peace. <laughs>